Hi guys, it's me again, Dr. Tro. I am here to discuss with you the nuances of insulin resistance and hypertension and how uh, it's related to diets and uh, what it is that happens when patients initiate a low carbohydrate paleo or low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're talking about insulin as it relates to insulin resistance and hypertension, okay? So most, uh, about 60% of the United States has prediabetes or diabetes. About 60% of the United States has hypertension or hypertension, uh, prehypertension. And um, so this is a widespread problem, okay? The majority of people have insulin resistance, okay? So what is insulin resistance? Basically, insulin resistance is your body losing its response to insulin. Your body, so what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone uh, whose main function is derived to uh, send glucose out of the blood and into the cells, okay? So when you eat a uh, McFlurry uh, with Oreos and you have your chocolate milk and your bananas uh, as part of a heart healthy diet in moderation, what happens? Your glucose level goes up and insulin level rises and insulin's main goal is to drive that glucose into the cells, into the tissues um, and, uh, uh, and kind of distribute that energy and into the fat cells, okay? Uh, now, what else does insulin do? Well, it blocks fat loss, right? So if your body is getting fed and getting food, you want to drive that energy into the fat for storage, all right? So insulin's goal is to help uh, distribute glucose and, and, to, and basically it's a fat kind of a storing hormone. It's an anabolic hormone, uh, meaning it, it uh, promotes tissue growth. So uh, what happens when you uh, are hyperinsulinemic. Well, your body's losing its ability to respond to that insulin, okay? So after repeated bouts of that Oreo McFlurry and repeated bouts of that uh, you know, chocolate chip cookie and, and ice cream, your body is losing its response. And so it requires more and more insulin to drive that same amount of glucose into the cells, into the tissues, into the fat cells, okay? And this is a problem that happens over time. It's like a repeated exposure kind of thing. Okay, so what happens, um, so uh, along with insulin resistance, Okay, we very, very frequently see uh, hypertension, okay? Uh, insulin resistance and hypertension uh, follow together in metabolic syndrome. Uh, they're two peas at the same pot. So what's important to know here is when you go on a very low carbohydrate diet, whether it's paleo or, or uh, ketogenic Atkins, what happens is the first thing that happens when you eliminate sugars and, and most of your dietary carbohydrates, when that glucose level drops in your blood, uh, your insulin level is going to plummet. Okay, and one of the effects insulin does is it actually, um, it actually, uh, uh, to some extent, retains salt. So when, when your insulin level drops, you start to pee out more salts and you lose a lot of fluid. So when you're on the first couple of days of a ketogenic diet or a paleo diet or any carb restricted modality, that insulin level when it drops, okay, it, there's a somewhat of a diuretic effect where you start to lose a little bit of salt and you lose a lot of fluid and. People, you know, will tell you when they start a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet that they've lost, you know, a couple of pounds in the first week or so. And usually, this is this is actually is water weight in the first couple of days. So there's an immediate diuretic effect when you go on a low carbohydrate diet, a low sugar diet. Okay, which means that when you drop the sugar and your insulin plummets, okay, that you are going to uh, pee a little bit more, you're gonna lose a little bit salt, okay? With that salt, you can also lose some magnesium and your potassium shifts can happen. And for this reason, uh, some people actually in, in the induction phase in the first several weeks of a, a diet change, we'll recommend to them to take in some extra salt, salt their food, or we'll, re we'll recommend them to take magnesium or potassium, okay? Because when you go on a low carbohydrate diet, okay, you are excreting more sodium, you're excreting more calcium, Okay, and we generally uh, uh, tell people to drink more fluid because they're losing fluid that, because of that diuretic effect, and we tell them to add a little bit of salt to their food, and and if they you know uh, do uh, have some other issues, we may, we we may recommend uh, supplementing with potassium, magnesium, or or daily multivitamin. Okay, so what does this all mean for your blood pressure? Usually what happens is in the first several weeks, I will see the blood pressure drop five to 10 points, okay? As you lose that water uh, and as you lose that salt, uh, when your carbohydrates drop down, you usually will see a, uh, a drop in the blood pressure. And sometimes you see it even before substantial weight loss. You may just lose a couple pounds of water and that blood pressure is already dropping. So insulin and, and uh, kind of glycemia are intimately related with blood pressure as it relates to starting a low carb carbohydrate diet, you often will see blood pressure improve right away on a diet 
and you'll often will see uh, um, you know some some pounds early on lost due to this diuretic effect on a low carbohydrate diet okay so this answers the question how is hyperinsulinemia related to high blood pressure and how uh, how does this all relate to a ketogenic diet and a low carbohydrate diet well key points here are um, insulin uh, hyperinsulinemia is related to intimately with hypertension. Uh, uh, they're both two pieces of the same pod with regards to the metabolic syndrome. They're both part of this metabolic syndrome. When you go on a low carbohydrate diet, when you first start, when that insulin level drops, you will urinate out. You'll increase your urinary sodium. You'll increase your urinary calcium. You'll have shifts in your magnesium and potassium. And for this reason, and because there's a diuretic effect that accompanies this drop in insulin and drop in glucose, so you will urinate a little bit more and you will lose some fluid. And because of this, the blood pressure drops before substantial weight loss. As you lose weight, for every two and a half pounds you lose, you will lose one millimeter of mercury. So if you lost 20 pounds and your blood pressure was 140 over uh, 80, it will go to 130 over 75, okay? So it will drop 10 points. That systolic blood pressure will drop 10 points. So this answers the question, hyperinsulinemia, how is it related to blood pressure and how does it relate to uh, low carbohydrate diets? I hope this was helpful. Please leave some comments.